God, that smells delicious. He wants a hot dog. Okay, here we are again. BP number four? Uh, so, we got the crew here. Today we're gonna work on some backside. Um, dingers are over. Snowball is over. Now it's time to put some work in. So, uh, we're gonna work on backside tonight. Um, trying to go down the line and then all the way to a backside gap and then probably some middle shots. Yes, there will be some dingers and yes, there will be some pull stuff in there, but it's on video, on video, uh, but back, backside is going to be our main focus, so stay tuned. So Brandon here, um, he doesn't play tournament ball, he's the one that got me into softball. So if you don't do a lot of tee work and you're looking to kind of get started, first thing you do is just tr take like a dry hack, see if the ball is where it's comfortable in your swing. You know, maybe you need it higher, lower. Um, and then mess with, mess with your feet. Move back, move up, see what feels comfortable. And then, and then that's, your, that's your tee spot. You just gotta find the comfortable spot. If you wanna pull more, you back up, scoot, scoot towards the ball. You want to push more, scoot up to where you're catching the ball back in your stance. And really just working on smooth through it and that you're snapping your wrists, not trying to overpower or much. Good. Today, I am continuing to swing this pop because I want to hit it until it opens up and see what it's like when it opens up. And uh, this new Venom was uh, really impressive, so I liked it and I think I'm gonna keep swinging it. Billy, I cannot stop swinging up. Okay, well, <laughs> what I do whenever that's happening is you have to think barrel above the hands because then no matter what if your barrel's above your hands it's never going to be above your hands and swing up right. does that make sense yes so like even if you have to kind of like chop it first and then you find the flat plane be like that was great if you watch it in slow-mo like the like the barrel coming through the zone like so it's like you know it's like when it's coming in For the kids. For the kids. Yeah. For the kids. Yay. Hey. hey. Wave it off. I'm like. warm now. Hey. All that motivation. Well, subscribe I, and like. I feel bad. Hey, uh, I got a YouTube channel, kids. So. <laughs> subscribe and like. Ooh. Ow. First swing of the day. So you notice his feet are almost even with a softball. So when you're pushing, you gotta let that ball really travel deep in your swing. Normally, he would be striding two or three feet to a ball, but now you're just letting the wrists work. You're still working your yes. hips. Lots of hands. Man, those are good swings. Yeah. Backside, key. Ball's got to be deep. Hands. Hands. <laughs> nice. <laughs> We're getting close. No. Those are great swings, man. Thank you. All right, now before you swing. So, notice how far back his feet are now from where earlier he was up. Correct. Even with the ball. So yeah, this here, I can't pull the ball from up from up there. Yeah.
fantastic tee work today. <clears throat> In a game, you're not going to move like this. No. This is this is just to work from a stationary tee. In a game, you'll just attack out front to pull it or let the ball carry deeper to push it. Where you stand in the box kind of depends on your swing, how high you like to catch the ball in your body. And that's where you really need to stand in the box. And then close and far kind of depends on the length of your body and, and how good your hips open up as you swing. Yep, 100%. We're trying to work backside tonight. So we just really want to focus on keeping it that way to start. I've definitely learned over the years that ball at your chest is easier to go that way with. Amen. So. Do you have more. a specific she hole that you, that you try to go to in games or do you just hit it hard to the backside? I mean, that's all gonna depend on the defense and who's pitching, what they're trying to do, the situation. But I'd love to get better at that line you know, some of the best that do it that way, they, they wear it, they'll go after that line, they'll go after a first baseman. I and tell you what, it's not, it's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> if the first baseman knocks it down, it's right there. Yeah. And you hit it at a third baseman hard and they knock it down, they still got to throw it across the diamond. Let's be honest too. I mean, sometimes even when I'm trying, like I, th I, I tell myself think line because if I think line, I usually end up hitting the four hole. <laughs> and I'm sure there's some pitchers out there that would say sometimes when I try to hit the four hole, I hit them. So <laughs> definitely attacking that line. Yeah, like the those. Is. Which I mean. What's causing him to do that? You're just meeting, Still swinging up at it? Yeah, I mean, you're just, you're just meeting the, he's meeting the ball on the, you know, on the, I could never, Upward do, plane I could never the swing. do that if I tried to. Like, that's more of my shot. Yeah, but you have to remember, Miz isn't, no, I mean, I don't mean this in a negative way, but Miz isn't trying to do that, right? That's just his, natural swing. that's just his natural swing that he hasn't broken any of those baseball habits. And look, if you're a guy that has a baseball swing and it's working, don't change it. Yeah. Like, if your game is right center and for whatever reason, it works that way with a top hand swing, I'm not saying don't learn another swing. What I'm saying is use it to your advantage. One of the best in the game at hitting that top hand is Big John. He will hit that top hand knuckleball down the line over and over. He'll just spin it, spin it. There it is. That's a good swing. I'm a bad ball hitter, so I'm probably going to love this. Well, you're up, or no? Brandon, you're up, bud. Matt, you have a future in pitching ASA. Yeah, you do. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> Been working on it. Yeah. <laughs> How you like yes. that? That was a shot. That was a great swing. Yeah, it is up there. Hey, Cole, I got a question for you. Do you, are you a guy that changes bats, like inloads, barrel size, any of those things in a tournament? Or when you go into a tournament, you're like, I'm swinging 12 and a quarter, half ounce in load, no matter what, there's one size in the bucket for you. I always swing the same bat. Really? Yeah. Same size, everything? Yeah. Cool. I do. I couldn't imagine changing in loads or barrel length. Same bat? You have multiple bats in there? Dang. So what are the difference? Last year it was just like the KP. Two same bats or two different bats? Different? Yeah, it was a KP, which is a half ounce, and uh, really was a That's a good survey question. I feel like there's a lot of different, I kind of expected everyone to say this one bat. Like yeah, for me, I don't, for me, uh, I don't switch at all. For me, I'm right there uh, with you. Because, I mean, I could switch season to season, right? Like if yeah, I need yeah. to go from a half to a full, no problem, but having two different inloads in a bucket, wild. Billy working on keeping it down tonight. 450 yeah. feet first swing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. pull it now, Bill. Right. Go ahead and hit yeah. it out to left. I, I tried to keep that one. <laughs> hey, now, Cole hey. introduced this video as we might have some dingers. No, what is this? Hey, Billy. Billy's first hit two out, swings. Out, Go ahead, Bill. Pull it out. There you go. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, what's the point of hitting it backside if it's still well, over? It was going to really lock in on BP tonight, work on our base hits, work on that backside four hole line. There you go. There we go. If middle's all you got. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Hey, camera. no, if you pull it, you don't get it tonight. Yeah, no camera for you. <laughs> no camera time for you, pal. I didn't even see it coming. Okay, now, but in a game, Oof. in a game, if you're that far off the plate, I know where you're going. But it don't matter if you hit it that hard. Yeah, I was about to say. Well, I also feel like Matt's pitching from 65. <laughs> well, let's walk it off. You do it. <laughs> right now. What is it, 16? That'd be 14. 14 steps. That's only, that's, how. what's the distance? I don't know. Should that I look like a pitcher? 48? 45? 48. 50? No. Why would it be 48? It's such a weird number. How is 45 any different? 45 is an even number. It's like in the middle of... 45 is an odd number. 48 is an even number. But even in the tens, right? You got 40, 45, 50, right? 40, what is 48? So in increments of five. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that, am I supposed to be good at backside? You're really good at backside. You have too many layers. Yeah, sure, Matt, you can use my bat. Oh, tap it, Matt, so it doesn't hit the camera. Jeez. Good oh, swing. Is... Right at the right fielder. Yep, yeah, out. Hit well, but out. Okay, let's talk situations. <clears throat> when do you go to right? Uh, give me a situation and I'll tell you yes or no. Okay. If I'm looking there. And look, a lot of the things I tell you are just things I've been taught sure. right from old heads. There's no... There's no 100% correct answer. Oh yeah, at for least, sure. At Every, least from me, because I'm not saying I ever know. Well, and, know well, I'll give I'll give the answer that is, I would say is most likely to be true for just about anybody in the situation. So let's hear one. Okay. No one on. Where are you going? What's Depend, your best chance of getting on? Depends on. So do you look for, oh, they're leaving a huge hole three, four? Um, if no one's on and they're going to give me that three, four hole, I will go after it. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's, but if it's the fourth inning or fifth inning and we've used two home runs and it's a 10, nine ball game for whatever reason, well, obviously, you know, you may lose one, but in a general situation, I mean, just going to attack whichever side has less people. Now, do you go with pitch? Um, Man, I, I would like to say that I always have a plan and I stick to it, but that could change the second I see a short inside pitch and I'm like, oh, I can pull that through anybody. Yeah. And I'll just react and go get it. But do you ever try something on the backside if you have a strike on you? Oh, or yeah. Personally? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you got you got to be comfortable going right center with a strike on you. I mean, one thing I am trying to really get better of this offseason and I have been is not being afraid to hit a foul ball to yeah. see one deep, right? Like. Hitting with a strike at the higher levels, you have to be able to do it. Yeah. TE28 at checkout. Who's called, baby? Who fex? I'm going to see that later, whatever that was. <laughs> I know. It's mostly just for you to go, yep, that's not going in there. Yeah. All right, still backside. In a perfect world, I stay between this light pole and the foul pole. That's 100% not going to happen, but that's the goal. The one thing for that to happen is you have to be super disciplined on the pitch selection. There's one. And they're not always going to be hard, but we'll just take that direction. It's a strike, but not what I want for this situation. I'll take that. That's foul. not coming back. Just trying to see it as deep as possible. Heavy. I want to kind of see what I can get away with on the depth. Oh now, a good pitcher out of home runs, what are they going to throw you in a game? Most oh, of the they're going to feed me inside. And so I'm just going to be as far off as I can get away with. it doesn't with matter, right? And just. They know it, you're it, trying to push it. If they hammer me right here, then I like to think. So try to rip a few on the inside, hit two or three on the inner half. I, I'm really just trying to hit middle of the plate. Yeah. Most of them are 
And this way I can still hit that inside pitch if I get two strikes on me. And that slice, that's that barrel dropping. I feel it now, Matt. Yeah. Perfect. Hey, dude, that was it. No, that's... The change is the back foot, like what you said. You said, like, to be light on your front foot, and I was like, I hear what he's saying, but, like, then it clicked with me when you said you're landing on your front foot. And I was like, okay. Those last four, I was like, those last four, I told myself, stay back. Stay in that back leg. Hit from that backside. Well, that's what he was talking. That was the best point, dude. Like, you said it. I, I couldn't put it in my head. Like he kept saying, "You're landing hard." I was like, "Yeah, I feel it," yeah. but I don't think my stopping. foot getting down hard is the problem. I think something else is causing me to land hard. That was short. And then it dawned on me. I was like, "I'm going to the ball instead of letting it come to me." And the times that I jam it into the ground, I, I don't keep that smooth little whip. And I went like this, and you were like. <laughs> it was yeah. gross. That was, that was great, great all around right there. Yep. Hey, hey, hey. Hit. Hold up, hold up. So now, Miz, you got a strike on you. We're still working backside. Oh, I got this. So you can't go foul. I got this. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> no way you take that no in the game. It off like you meant to yeah, no shot. <laughs> I wish that would have dotted it. 2-2 two, two for Miz. That's a little heavy. This is this full count? Full count. Oh, oh he got crap. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nom, 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 Name that movie. I don't like this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I wouldn't have got that one. I, was, I haven't seen that one. Go. Good round. See, that was a perfect inside out right there with your yeah. hands. Is, you think there's a reason why you have such good and strong wrists? Hey, grew up in the trailer Something park. that you did over time or just kind of natural? Or a little both? Thank Listen you. to Billy. Thank you. <laughs> so my T work, and Matt, tell me if you did this. Our coach would make us put it like so like close to us. And we would have to literally like hit a line drive with the ball like right here. So we were literally almost like chopping, right? I did T where I would like let it get so like deep and chop almost. Oh, and uh and hitting basketballs. Also. My bad. <laughs> What'd you do with basketballs? Like, just like soft toss in a cage, just just for like wrist wrist strength. There. See, it's that easy. But how often in a tournament do you take that eighty percent swing? I don't. I'll, I'll do it maybe twice a tournament. Yeah. Here, one more, I think, right? That's a great pitch. I didn't like it. Strike one. <laughs> Ooh, damn it. Oh! oh keep it in. <laughs> Did it bounce over? <laughs> Actually, the first the first bead went through. Oh yeah, three of them. Really good hands on that short pitch. Do you know specifically what you did on a shorter pitch to be able to still hit it over there? Yeah, it's all about hands. Just think about your hands. So do you <clears throat> do you lean with it so you're not dipping, or do you just kind of stay where you're at and 
No, if anything, I'm trying to keep my shoulders le parallel to the ground and then really attack with your hands. We went through yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Three of them. Because same thing, if, you, if you're going to front dip your shoulder, the ball's going straight into the ground. But if you're too much back shoulder lean, then you're just going to either flare it, foul out, or flare it to right field, first base, whatever So do you be. overstep on a short pitch? Or still normal step, you just make sure that you're not tilting one way or the other? I'll probably overstep a little bit. You try but to catch up to it's it? It's more of an aggressive overstep versus yeah. a way too long. And, to and make the ball be deeper in your in your swing? Exactly. Because right. that, was, that was great. Yeah, see, that's crazy good on a yeah. flat pitch like that. Well, see, and another thing too, like I know that my ball is going to flare sure. or fade. Sure. So sometimes when I'm at the plates, I'm like, all right, my ball's fading a little bit more today. Maybe I need to try to start this at the center fielder so that it goes to yeah. right center. Yeah. You de so when I am going to right center, yeah. I aim right here. Yeah. At the, I imagine there's a pitcher screen. Yeah. And I and I hit the corner of the pitcher screen and it ends up in right center. Yeah. So like this is a great view because you can think, okay. If I'm gonna go line, I'm gonna go start it at that foul or that light pole. Yep. But if I go at that light pole, it's probably a fly out to the right fielder. So. You get used to how much your ball cut. Yeah, it's a, yeah. Yeah, after I hit maybe, depending on. <laughs> so I had a guy ask me uh, in one of the comments. He was more asking like, what do you do with different pitches? Uh, you know that you see in the conference like a high pitch, lower pitch. Like, how do you? What kind of swings do you put on those? Well, each pitcher tends to have, ten, I mean, I would say they have tendencies, you know. Some guys like to max out the top. Some guys like to be more flat with more knuckleball. Like like Andy would always, for me, you know, I faced him very minimal. A lot of guys have thousands of bats off of him. But when I've seen him, he tended to be more flat and firm with a good knuckleball. And so you just know with Andy, you're like, look, I'm just trying to get one that ends up around my waist. And then you face a guy like Pinkham. He yeah. likes to top out the zone. So with Pinkham, I'm trying to stay tall. Yeah, and so let's let's say a pitcher that touches the ceiling. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what's your approach like? Do you stand in the box, maybe in a different spot? No, that's, not, not that's unless really he's dropping. just gotten me a couple times. Um, and that's, I'll go back, I'll reference back to what I said in the last video, is the higher that pitch is, the more I'm thinking, armpit away from back hip because I got to stay tall with a tall pitch. I'm going to work right center gap here. I'm aiming for the pitcher screen, pretty much the top right corner of the pitcher screen. And usually it ends up in right center. So when you hit in a game, when there's no top right pitching screen, are you just trying to visualize the screen yeah. there? Okay. Yeah. I know screens aren't cheap and I know it's easy to go buy the $50 foldable one. Just go spend the money, go in with a couple buddies, get the one like this. Get the one that stands up, get the one you can hit. You know you're good. I mean, so many times you go hit BP and a guy's got the foldable one and he's like, oh, don't hit the net, man, don't hit the net. Oops. Well, hitting the net's part of BP, making sure you're locked in. So get a good net, don't die. In a game, if you're really trying to go for a spot, be selective on the pitches. If you don't hit your pitch, you're starting off from behind. Well, I always get myself in trouble whenever I, I try to hit the spot too much. Right, you get too honed in on like... I'll, I'll, I'll be out in front, because I'm thinking I have to spin it down in this spot. I'm out in front, and then what happens is I'm doing this, and it just pops up to the infield. Yep. Instead of letting the ball get deep, and then working Well, that cut swing produces it. some of the ugliest misses. That was a good one. Is it between between those two light poles and between those two light poles? Or dead center? Okay. I'm so excited to eat. I mean, I really want some breakfast stuff, but that'll be later. That'll be after I eat my burger. <laughs> there we go. Oh. There we go. 
Okay, we're hitting it hard to the middle. We can blast the pitcher, we can blast the pitcher, but most of the time when you're going for the pitcher, you're not actually going for the pitcher, right? I mean, unless you're a meanie, meanie face. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was awesome. There we go. I got to lead with my knob. I'm trying to have my bat out here. I got to lead with the knob. Let the bat come around. There you go. It gets the people going. Corn dogs, Jackie. All these people. He didn't call you a jive turkey. Did you call me a JT? Did you just call me a JT? So we're trying to hit it in the puddle? Negative. I saw some splashes out there. Yes, I dare you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I missed those two in a row high. I felt like I was getting a little too low on my backside. So I really tried to stay tall on that one. And then I ended up over exaggerating it. So now in a perfect world, I would stop like we just did and kind of like take a breath, reset. And I'm just a big try fan to, of the reset. Yeah, just try to go right into that swing that I just missed three times. And honestly, in a game, if I get a strike, <laughs> if I get a strike that I don't like, the best thing that helped me out was stepping out of the box and, and resetting. If you're struggling or you've missed two at bats in a row, just take a pitch. Just watch a pitch land. Even if it's a cookie, just, and when you do that, it does tend to help. Am I going to take a pitch here? Absolutely not. You out of here? Yeah. Peace, Peace brother. Love you, man. See you, Miz. Not between the light poles. But in a very serious world, go to McDonald's and get the filet of fish, light tartar sauce. Trust me, I thought it was terrible too. Yeah, I'm throwing you nothing. All right, here we go. Saturday night. Not proud of myself, but they were good. Honestly, I'm trying not to touch mud. That's fair. <laughs> so I'm just like, that's very fair. Feel my tendencies when I'm tired. Like, what am I doing wrong when I'm fucking gassed? Mission accomplished? Okay. I'm going to okay. force him to throw me one more. We're just pretending the middleman's not right there. That's just a... <laughs> That's just a really hard hit. Nothing more American than that. Merck. Maybe relish and ketchup and mustard on a hot dog. <laughs> on the 4th of July while watching fireworks at Mark Patterson's house. That's pretty American. Well, it is uh, over. BP is over. I hope you learned something. I hope you stay tuned for the whole thing. I appreciate y'all with the comments. Let me know the next thing that you want us to cover in BP. Time to turn the lights out and uh, go get some water burger.